Ladies and gentlemen, in the words of AVE, this is a treat especial. Well, when I'm kind of sat at home, I often feel worse than I would if I was up out and about, even though I've been a little bit poorly the past few days. So what I decided to do was doff my wax cap, kick on the old hiking boots, and put on the real tree effect camo jacket, and go for a little bit of a stroll in my local woods. A little bit of a, a, a wild mushroom Nigel Farage. And this is what the forest presented me with today. Two different types of mushroom I think I've got here and we're going to try and identify one of them to be double sure before I go down the road of frying and consuming these bad boys. Uh, so I'll just insert a little clip here of me finding these little beauties. I'd already found these but I didn't get the camera out so let's just watch that. A little something different today folks. We're out in the woods and uh, I'm doing a little bit of fungi foraging. You can see we've got a nice little collection here. And I just took a step over this leaf litter. Chance, come here. And uh, hiding down here are what I think are some bluets. Look at them little beauties. You want some more blue stalks? You can just about see them all growing down there, look. So I'm going to pick these bad boys. There's some more there. And they're going in the bag. There's some down there as well, look. Can you see them? So what we're going to do is uh, just quickly identify what we have here. So these are called wood bluets, blue stalks. And you'll notice as well, these are also bluets, blue stalks. And you can see they come in all different shapes and sizes. But the telltale giveaway is the velvet blue colour of the underside and the cap, really. Easily confused with um, clouded agarics. But those, these are not. You can really see the colour on that one now, look. Sometimes this one feels a bit hollow on the stem. Chances are it's got some maggots in there. Which is not the end of the world because we've got quite a collection. We've got quite a few here. Some of these big ones. That feels like a nice solid stem. These are probably going to be really nice. So what I'll probably do is uh, just wash them under the water. And uh, freeze what I don't eat. And then maybe... Maybe just pop them into a stew or something like that. But they're really nice, firm, firm, uh, textured meat on these mushrooms, really. I didn't used to like them, but I think I'm coming round. And then on these bad boys, I think we've got shaggy parasols. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Um, I do really need to 100% identify these bad boys, though. So what I'm going to do is cut one of them straight down the middle probably the one that looks the ropiest like him I mean it fits the bill, it's got the bulbous stem oh I've already peeled a bit off there, that's quite tough just throw that in there so what we should get is some orange staining on the stem when it's cut so let's go in for that we'll cut this, it should also have a hollow stem that is rather tough. Oh yeah, straight away. So you can see that the stalk's now turning orange. And uh, yeah, it's all bruised where I squeezed it on the sides. And indeed, the stem is hollow. Confirming that this is a shaggy parasol. There we go. Quite a lot of creepy crawlies in there feasting on what I would consider to be a nice looking shroom. Look at the orange staining coming through now. You can really start to see that, can't you? Which means that we definitely have, we definitely have the shaggy parasol. So these are edibles, but some people have a bad reaction to them. So you really have to cook them up first 
And then if you're not sure, try them, leave it 24 hours and then come back to the rest if you've got no adverse effects. But if I lay these next to this, you can now see the orange staining that's come in, confirming that they are shaggy parasols. And parasols to you and all, my friend. So, uh, yeah, nice little um, result from the basically just walking the dog. Uh, yesterday as well, so I'm vlogging now, so I may as well carry on the vlog, haven't I? Yesterday, Stuart rang me up. Uh, that little compressor that I bought can't keep up in the pub, so it shit the bed last night. So what I'm going to do is, uh, excuse me, so what I'm going to do is nip down there today. Um, I asked Froggy to put the big compressor in there for the time being, but if Tom's coming across next Friday to cut some stuff out with a plasma torch, we're going to need that compressor in the shop. So I'm going to go down and basically analyse the situation there, and uh, hopefully the stainless steel fittings will have arrived. We can have a look at them. And then I'm off to uh, a birthday party tonight, an 18th birthday party for Cameron, which is our friend, Mr. Dixon Windows. It's his oldest son, turning 18. Hmm. So I'm gonna pick up probably some nice cider or something for him, for me. And then we'll take that along with us tonight. So let's jump in the car. Let's have a cruise down to, uh, to the brewery and let's check out the situation. It's super tidy in here for once. So I've grabbed the uh, screwdriver set. I've just noticed that the front door's not closing quick enough and the pub on the closure, you know, the automatic closure. So I'll go and give that a tweak now and we'll go and have a look in the cellar at this compressor. big boy lined up. I wonder what's wrong with it then. So it runs. I think probably what's happened is the duty cycle on it is no good and it basically just overheated so uh, bigger unit required so that 50 litre one might end up staying in here if we can't get uh, something bigger and quieter to replace it Guess what we don't drink will bring back. Like <laughs> that's gonna happen. <laughs> Quick check on all the tanks, make sure everything's fighting fit. Looks pretty good to me. 19, 19, 18.2. That's probably finished by now that one. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's all I'm gonna do in here today, folks. I'm gonna go home. Uh, I might fry up some of them mushrooms with a little bit of bacon. Mind you, it's one o'clock. I'll do that tomorrow. We're gonna have to go get ready for the pate. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to Harrison's Brewery. Yes, we're in on a fine, sunny Monday morning today, and you'll be pleased to know that I seem to have shaken off most of that cold, that chest cold. A little bit of a cough on the chest, but nothing to worry about massively. 
So today I'm going to set about completing a few jobs that I couldn't quite get around to last week. One of them. Finish off this filing. I keep calling it a filing cabinet. It's not a filing cabinet. It's a massive tool storage or what you might call it. It's a locker. It's a locker. So I'll finish this off today. I think it's pretty sturdy though already. I've got 90% of the uh, wobble and twist out of it. So we'll stand that back up today. And then also over the weekend, one of the compressors in the cellar packed up. So mine's in there at the minute. I'm thinking if I'm going to buy a new one, um, I think that mine is a 50 litre, so I might get myself a 100 litre. There's not much difference in them. Put the 100 litre in here, keep the 50 litre in there. Shebang. And I've got a 100 litre compressor in here for the uh, plasma cutter and everything else. And then there's also a bunch of cleaning sockets which I need to fit to the, uh, what would you call it, uh, to the cleaning ring main on the keg board in the cellar to allow Stuart to get all the lines cleaned in one go instead of having to change seven and put another seven on. So we'll also set to work doing that today. I'm just scanning around in here as well. I noticed that there's still a fair bit of tidying up to do, but it isn't half as bad as it was last week. And the good thing is, all of the dust is gone, which I've no doubt that probably contributed to my unhealthy chest condition last week. So, camera flipped. Work started, let's just crack on with it. Not gonna get anywhere am I stood here nattering about it. Let's get it done. <laughs> known to everyone to act quite especially cowardly. One brisk day, quite brisk for the South, he had a few too many drinks and started running his mouth. I walked into a cantina, asked for whiskey on the rocks. Howard Lee turned right towards me and started poking fun at my red socks. I in turn turned towards him to tell him they were a gift from the missus. And if you keep on talking, you'll join your wet friends, the fishes. I disliked him and almost on a whim I thought I ought to brace myself for a flying limb And what do you know, I knew he'd throw his fist, miss and fall on the ground with a sound like a flopping fish <laughs> back towards me and told the bartender I need another drink. <laughs> turned around sober as a judge so fast you'd think he's a prospector and I was a 
gold rush. <laughs> Well there we have it folks, that's how you clean the lines effectively. So what I would normally do um, is pick a different day for this and then probably drink the first pint that comes off because it is pretty much good beer that's going down the drain, unfortunately. Um, but uh, the importance of cleaning your lines outweighs beer that you're gonna waste I'm afraid. It's a necessary evil and you've just got to price your products accordingly. But now what we've got and done is filled all of these lines and taps up with line cleaner. We're going to let that sit for 15 minutes, go and do another job. And then we'll open them all up again and we'll drain that container that's in the cellar completely empty. Give it a rinse with some water, pull that water through and then we'll fill it up with water and we'll give all of these lines a rinse with a couple of those containers full of water to make sure that there's no residual line cleaner in there. And then what we'll do is come back and hook up the beers and pull them through. And then that's your lines cleaned. Simple as. And right then and there I knew the coward Howard Lee seemed to have been scheming a plan most cowardly. So while I leave Stuart next door, to complete the cleaning of the lines, I've come in here to just finish the two welds on the corner of this cabinet, which I thought I'd done this morning. Turns out I haven't. And then once I've done that, I will be uh, dragging this out and then maybe starting another job. Stu wants me to put some notice boards up in the pub, in the kitchen, for him and the staff. So that's perhaps something I can be getting on with. I also need to go into town and get some more jugs and that kind of stuff. Uh, measuring jugs for them to use in the cellar. Because they're pinching all my buggers out of the brewery. Not having it. So we'll fire up the welder. Do a little bit of hot metal gluing. And uh, and get on with a few other jobs. Freaking right we did. job off the list. What I've put together here are some push plates for the toilet doors. So I know I could have gone and bought them for about seven quid each but I've got this scrap stainless. This is off cuts from the tank build and uh, well I think they look pretty snazzy. I was going to try and weld the word push and then gents or ladies or whatever into them 
I had to go on a little bit of scrap and quite frankly, well, it kind of went awry. But you can see what I was going for. So it's going to have the word push on it. And then for gents it was going to be a bottle with like the liquid coming out the side. And then for the ladies it was a bottle facing straight down with the liquid coming out the bottom. Not literally the bottom. But, uh, oh here it is. Look. Can you see? It's reversed. But you get the idea. So, uh, yeah, what I did was printed it on the waxy side of, you know when you get stickers and you peel the stickers off? Well, this is the side of the paper where you peel the stickers off. So if you print straight onto that, it actually works as a transfer. Let's see if I can put it on this bit of wood. And if you rub it, oh, I moved it. But yeah, you get the idea. If you rub it hard enough, it sort of transfers onto the timber. You can just about make it out. I'd used it once, there wasn't much ink left. Well, there you go. Little tip for you, folks. Little tip for you there. So I'm going to go and put these on the door, and then we'll see what we're going to do. It's 20 past five. Do I really want to be working late? Probably not. I've heard they had a cloud water cask at Beer Heads. Might have a walk in. Something I also want to do in the next maybe two or three weeks is kind of check out the heating side on these fermenters because it is obviously getting a little bit colder in here um, and as you can see 15.1 16.6 16 16.9 so really that's telling me that these beers have finished fermenting but the only way to find that out truly is to test the gravity I don't have the tilt yet for anybody out there curious um, it's on the back burner. I am going to get three though for these bad boys. So if this heating element and down here isn't, uh, as they say, heating, then we're going to have to either replace it with something else or kind of uh, fix them. <laughs> I don't know if it's powerful enough. They were very cheap electric blankets if you recall the build so they're only sort of kicking out 40 80 watts or something like that maybe it's not enough it's probably enough to keep the chill off but maybe not enough to uh, to make them heat up so might be a case of rethink the idea there or maybe even wrap the cone with another one and then obviously the heat's going to rise through the cone You've got to remember that stainless steel is a terrible conductor of heat, so that could also be the problem. Mm -hmm.